How's Martha? Oh, he's fine. Still hard at work on his book. Oh, there has been a slight change of title again. No. Uh-huh. From landscape gardening is an art to landscape gardening can be revolting. Oh, you tell him if nobody else buys a copy, I will. <laughs> well, he might fool us. I've read it. It's very amusing. Fine. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jackson, there was a message from Mr. Raymond. He says he's coming to the meeting, but he'll be a few minutes late. Oh, thank you. Lucky you. After three years, Mr. Raymond finally condescends to come to a board meeting. Nora, since when do you keep track of Raymond? We'll probably read all about it in the afternoon papers. How civic-minded he is, you know. Oh, come now, Nora. Raymond's been very generous to the hospital. I know. He just increased his donation. I know. And he gave that plenty of publicity, too. Nora, what did Raymond ever do to you? To me? Oh, why, nothing. Why, why I don't even know the man. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Doctor. Come morning. in. Hi, you get started as soon as Raymond arrives. Hi, Paul. Glad to see you. Hi, Nora. Oh, hi, Kay. Quiet night? Never guess it's my aching feet. Oh, Mamma Mia. What the night shift can do to what was once irresistible beauty. <laughs> I'm too tired to even go home. Oh, give me a cigarette, will you, darling? Yeah, king size. Oh, I forgot. You don't smoke. Mm -hmm. Nora, did I ever tell you what lured me into nursing? Oh, I think so, a few thousand times. Where is he? Where is that rich patient, the one with all the moolah? You mean the one who's so grateful for your tender care he leaves your fortune? Yeah, or the one whose resistance gets so low he asks me to marry him. Oh, and their resistance gets that low? Yeah, I know. They're dead. There. There's exactly what I mean. Somebody like John Raymond. He's got money, he's got good looks, but unfortunately, he's got his health, too. Go on home, Kay. I've got work to do. Oh, if he'd only break his leg or something. And I could have him for just about two weeks. If you're that desperate, why don't you go on out and wait for him? It's pretty slippery out there on the hall. He might fall and break a leg. Not with my luck. <laughs> Still, miracles do happen. Yeah. Hey, Nora. Hey. He's coming. Johnny Raymond's coming. Now, what are you going to do about it? Maybe he'll remember you, Nora. <laughs> Still won't listen to me. Still shutting me out. Ah. You pinhead. I left my briefcase in the car downstairs. Will you have my driver fetch it, please? I'll go. Oh, it's pitiful. Really pitiful. What happened to those plans you had when you were a kid? Oh, what a fascinating devil you were going to be. You were going to have John Raymond worshiping at your feet. Well, this is Johnny Raymond is still unfinished business. What are we going to do about it? Hmm? I want to announce the engagement of my daughter, Nora, and Timothy McCary. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all right. Leaving for Philadelphia in the morning. Publisher wants these plates. I've been thinking about Nora, Harry. There's something peculiar. Ah, there's a job I did almost 15 years ago for the Willoughby estate. Ah, <laughs> this one's a beautiful. This is 
is our Judge Raymond. Yes, drop it, Mrs. Harry. I want to talk to you about your daughter. See? Let's talk about my daughter. How come after five years holding him off, she suddenly relents? Suddenly agrees to marry this McCary chap. Fine man, Jim. A giant road and Papa, come on, you owe me a dance. McCary, eh? that kind of talk before. Do you know? Laura Gilpin, you go right home. I'm dead. If you don't go home, I'll tell your father. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. Stan, if you promise not to tell my father, I'll tell you my secret. Exactly three and a half minutes the floor show goes on at Ciro's. I'm sure you'll have fun. Right. Mm -hmm. All the stupid places to leave a lawnmower. You come from. I heard you fall. Perhaps I can help you. No, it's nothing. Your child, you're hurt. Let me see. Stop that, sir. All right. Now. 
night. What are you doing? Removing the lawnmower. Leave it there. So someone else might Just leave it there. I want the guard to see back where he's shooting. Back the very left. Bill has warts all over his face. What's that? What made you say that? He's very rude. Yes, I know, but that phrase, that particular phrase, it sounded so familiar. What do you want? I just offered to help. I don't need any help. Thank you. Why don't you leave me alone? I bet you don't even know where you are, whose house you're in. My name's John Raymond, Jr. As soon as I get you fixed up, I'll swoon. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean to create the impression that the... What's your name? Florence Nightingale. It could be. You put that stuff on with great authority. That's a good job. Uh, where'd you learn to do this? Lesson six. First aid manual. Nightingale, uh, what are you doing? I like the way your bedroom is done. Oh, don't be frightened. I'll be going in a minute. I don't like harsh lights. Is that better? Yes. You might find it difficult to explain what you're doing here this time of night with the lights out. Oh, Mr. John Raymond, Jr., don't look now, but you're, uh... Warts are showing again. Oh. oh, I see my warts show when my stuffiness shows. Is that it? Yes. Oh, a big one just popped out on your forehead. There, it's gone. Would you like a fire? Oh. Well, I better go now. Oh, please don't. Oh. This is weird. Everything you say sounds familiar, and yet, who are you? I'm Princess Felicity, the lady with the magic lipstick. Stop being so mysterious, Princess Felicity. Now, that sounds familiar. Is that from a child's fairy tale? Mm -hmm, sort of. Of course, I, I should have known. At least when they had me. Oh, my. Sarah, right across the hall. Who? My aunt. She's been visiting me briefly for the past three years. Oh. Another warden. Mm-hmm. If you'd really rather I didn't play, I no, won't. No, no, please play. Quietly. <laughs> You'll win your case. Your case, I read about in the newspaper. Think you'll win? Oh, I never know. Tell me about it. I'm afraid it's too complicated for you to understand. All right. You sure you wouldn't like a fire? Positive. We submit, therefore, that the position we have taken is founded upon a fundamental principle of constitutional law and humbly appeal to this court for review of the facts as set forth in brief. Brilliant. Just brilliant. I bet you didn't understand a word of it. Doesn't make any difference. It's still brilliant. Well, you listen beautifully. That's a great talent. We're going to see each other again before I leave for Washington. Well, I don't know. It's not easy for me to get away. Why? On account of the witch. The witch? Yes. 
girl I live with. She's a monster. I have to wait till she's exhausted or asleep, and even then she tries to stop me. In her sleep? Mm-hmm. Extraordinary. Suddenly you live in a special world of your own, don't you? <laughs> The radio on, Sarah. Tell her to go away. It's almost dawn. Go away, Aunt Sarah. Tell her to go back to bed. Go back to bed, Aunt Sarah. Well, that's that's one what that's on its way out. <laughs> but there's another one, a big one right here. Not sure that I see it. Oh, it's there, it's there. I mean, take my word for it. I'd better wait till the next time. Until I'm sure. I have to go now. Why? I'm supposed to be back before the witch wakes up. I'll take you home. Oh. Shoes. This is the strangest thing. I don't know your name, who you are, or what you do, or anything about you. Yet I feel as if I know. I...
crowd's been going full blast. Tired. How do you feel? Tired. Hello, Papa. Oh, I'm very tired. Well, I'm on my way. Oh. I'll be back in plenty of time to make all arrangements for the wedding. Don't worry about a thing. Bye, darling. This friend of yours, Nora, has she any idea where she went or what she did? No. But from all the things she discovered, she's... Well, I, I mean that uh, she's almost sure that she left the house. It just doesn't seem possible, Doctor, that a person could, well... Uh, no, it's rare, but it does happen. During the war, soldiers would get up in the middle of the night and fight battles all over again. And no recollection of it in the morning. Well, of course, fatigue cases. Usually caused by some deep frustration. A subconscious urge to make amends for something left undone. Did this happen at night? Yes. It usually does. That's when the conscious personality is tired, worn out, has no resistance. And if the subconscious is rebellious enough... Oh, but, Doctor, we are talking about a, a normal, happy girl. Are we? Yes. Well, I, I know her very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, about this girl's childhood, Nora? Any ugly experiences? Uh, no. No, I asked her about that, and she doesn't remember anything. Yeah, she probably wouldn't. Probably formed a memory block. Well, I don't know what to say, Nora. Nothing to get frantic about, but I do believe this girl should see a psychoanalyst. Now, if you want me to recommend a good one... A psychoanalyst? Yes, perhaps she could dig out what's troubling her. Oh, no, There's I don't think so. Obviously, some uh, psychic disturbance. Oh, I, I don't think she'd want to see a psychoanalyst. Uh, but, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll speak to her about it, Doctor. I, I will, and... And it, uh, it probably wouldn't happen again anyway. It's probably all just in her imagination. And I, oh, I slipped. Uh, I'll let you know, Doctor, and thank you very much. We made a thorough investigation, Mr. Raymond. We've done it all week. We discovered that there were 1,264,000 yards of this identical lace sold last year. To run down the owner of that particular piece was a little too tough. I was afraid so. Go on, uh... What else did you do? Well, I had my boys waking on a day and night. I says to them, boys, you've got to find me a girl five foot five and one half, weight about 112, limpid gray eyes, soft, silky brown hair that drooped over the right side of the face, somebody that walks like she was floating on air. Mm -hmm. Stop being funny, Thompson. I am not being funny, sir. The boys had to have a good description. I told them just what you said. Go on, go on, go on. Well, I... I had them planted all over town. I even told them to listen to voices. I says to them, you got to listen for a voice that's low, sort of, mm -hmm. and draggy. Mm -hmm. A voice that sounds like a muted cello. <laughs> Skip what you told the boys. Uh, what happened? Well, when we run into limpid eyes, the hair is wrong. When the hair droops over the right side of the face, the walk is wrong. And when the voice is like a muted cello, everything is yeah, wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, sir, unless we get more information. Send the bill to me here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Thanks. Brother, when you go, you go. It's just curious, that's all. A person can't just pop into your life and pop out again like that. Well, I'll admit I've been after you to cut loose, but I never expect you to drift out to sea. This only happens to school kids. Hang up your bobby socks, Consul. You've got to leave tonight to plead before the United States Supreme Court. I'm not sure I'm going. Mind if I join you? Don't worry. I, I wouldn't give up the Supreme Court for any female. Oh, I wasn't worried. Feel like a drink, Bob? Mike, it's a miracle. 
There she is. The princess. Princess? Of course, we cut the measure to fit any size room. Oh. Now, I wonder, is there any particular weave or pattern? Well, I like that. Pattern. How wonderful if I do. I, I beg your pardon. I've looked everywhere. Well, just a minute, you. A princess. Me. Princess? You must be insane, Mr. Raymond. I... Oh, would you get out of the way, please? Oh, but you will. Hey, oh, boy. What's the matter with that guy? I, I don't know. Like I said before, Bob. You need a drink. I don't understand it. I could have sworn what she was... What are you talking about, Johnny? Her eyes weren't limpid, they flat. Her hair doesn't droop. It's slick. She doesn't walk on air. She hits the pavement like a clod house. I know, but she... I'm sorry. Look, don't you realize what's happening to you, Johnny? You thought about her so much, you're having hallucinations. You'll be seeing her in every woman's face you look into. Yeah. You need to get back on the main line. Now, don't change your mind. You've got to be in Washington Monday. Now, get on that train and stay don't there. Don't worry about me. The sooner I get out of this town, the better. Good luck, John. getting away with, pretending you didn't know me this afternoon. Uh, Mrs. John Raymond, Jr. And showing up here. What's this all about? Well, I couldn't pretend I didn't know you. Oh, you couldn't? No. Suppose that girl was for other people. She was a fool. What? Any girl who pretended she didn't know you must be a fool. Are you trying to tell me you were not the girl in the furniture store with the man who had kicked... Well, should have been me. Oh, Johnny, I miss you terribly. Just terribly. Oh. You're not the girl? Get around. Let me see you walk. Yes. You were going away. I went to your house and I saw your car driving away. Well, I, I looked everywhere for you. I almost got in a lot of trouble. I'm down. here now. Honestly, I never saw two girls that look so much alike, and yet. I got my bag. You might just here again. Boy, to get that bag. Most extraordinary thing I've ever heard of. The more I think about it, I certainly owe you an apology. This girl today, she had a, a hard mouth, a frozen face. Let's not talk about her, John. Oh, is that beautiful? Lights, Dingo, put out the lights. I call him Mr. Dingo. 
There was an amusement park when I was a kid. Called Dingles. I haven't heard it for years. Tell me all about it. I was just surprised. I wonder how a word like that just suddenly popped in your mind. Maybe something special happened. Yeah, special happened. I remember one time. I had a wonderful roller coaster. Oh, giant with that. My father wouldn't let me go on it because it was too dangerous. I remember how miserable I was. I remember, too. There was a little girl with us that day. Her father was staying at our house doing some landscaping. What do you mean you remember, too? Hello, Johnny. Was your father... <laughs> Certainly. In, in the garden at our house. Princess Felicity. Nora, you... You're Nora Gilpin. Oh, <laughs> you jughead Nora. Oh, Johnny. Oh. Oh, I, I, I knew there was something about this. Jughead. Suddenly turned out fine. Why didn't you tell me? Why did you get the guessing right? All these years, I never knew you were alive. Oh, I'm so glad you remembered Dingles. The princess came back to remove the wall. Wonderful frog. Frog. <laughs> I suppose you've made up for it with a dungeon for the roller coaster, honey. Been on him a million times since, huh? Marry a once, but much too busy. Johnny, that's terrible. That's the worst one of all. There's a roller coaster over there, a beauty. <laughs> They've been at it for hours. Mac, for the amount of this check, he can keep on riding all night if he wants. Like put the trigger in one thing. Hey, look at this. It'll be morning pretty soon. Yep. Well, lock up when they're through. I'm going home. Home. Raymond 
seems to be recapturing his youth. I always thought he was rather conservative. Uh, doctor. Uh, doctor, I wonder well, if... Good morning, I... Nora. Good morning. Is it all right with you if I turn things over to Kay this morning instead Why, of the of end course, of the week? Nora. Oh, thanks, it's awfully nice. You see, Tim and I have a lot of things to do before the wedding, you know, shopping and things like that. That young lady, back here. Yes? If I were you, I'd forget about that shopping for a while and get some rest. You look tired. I do? Mm-hmm. Now, you know, that's a very strange thing, Doctor. Everyone's been telling me that, and I don't understand it. Well, I've been sleeping at least ten hours every night. You have? Yes. Well, I, I guess it must be the excitement. <laughs> uh, I, I should get married more often, eh, Doctor? Oh, uh, Nora. Yes? How's your friend? What friend? You know, the one that... Uh... Oh, she's fine. It never happened again. Must have been her imagination. I'll fix it with Kay right now. Grab it here. Come on, Kay. Hey. Out all night and fresh as a daisy. What a man. Hey, look who's here. Kay, stop drooling. Come on, we have work to do. Nora. Nora, darling. I had to see you again. I'm leaving on the noon plane for Washington. Oh, what an unforgettable night, Jughead. Oh, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Oh, don't be embarrassed. We had a fine time. We don't care who knows this. You are an idiot. This is the second time you've done this Nora, to me. Nora, Nora, now let's not go through that again. Let me go, will you? Let me go! Will you let me go? Let me go! She is Nora Gilpin, isn't she? Yes, sir. Nora! Nora, open the door! Shh! Nora? Nora, I've got to find out what this is all about. Nora! Nora! Get your hands over there! Nora! Nora! Nora. 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 Now, you know where you are. Of course I know where I am. Get Nora. away from this door! You're doing the smart thing. Plead guilty and pay the fine, I always say. What happened to Mr. Raymond? Too much fire water? Uh, the receipt, please. Thank you. We just spoke to Miss Gilpin. Boy, you should have heard her take off. Any statement, sir? No, 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 okay. What did she say? She said you better not try to see her or even talk to her. Said next time she was going to use a club instead of her hand. She wasn't kidding. Any statement? Uh-oh. Hey, Johnny. Next case? Your Honor. Oh, yes. Your Honor, I'd like to change my plea to not guilty. You want a trial? Yes. Of course, you're entitled to it, Mr. Raymond, but in view of the publicity... I'd like to have it as soon as possible. I'm due in Washington. I know, the Supreme Court. Um, how's tomorrow morning, uh, 9.30? It's very kind of you. Very well. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, next case. The People versus Henry Rose. What's the big idea? You heard what the reporter said. I'm left holding the bag. Everybody thinks I'm bats or something. Or something. Maybe it's the wrong girl. I held her in my arm. Well, you, you might have made a mistake. How can you make a mistake like that? Don't well, see me, huh? Well, she'll see me. She'll talk to me, too, from the witness stand. I've got a few questions I want to ask that girl. What are you going to do, propose to her? all the witnesses who are here to testify that my conduct was disorderly. To save time, I'll admit that. I'm interested in defending only one phase of this affair. Miss Gilpin is charged that I accosted her on familiar terms, despite the fact that we were unacquainted. Uh, this has placed me in a most ridiculous light, and I want the opportunity to prove her statement's false. That seems reasonable. I'd like Miss Nora Gilpin on the stand, please. Nora Gilpin? Solemnly 
swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Your name? Uh, Nora Gilpin. Quite a parlay from the U.S. Supreme Court to this. Oh, well, sit down, Mike. Yes, Counselor. Miss Gilpin. What's this all about, Jughead? What's that? What's that? Uh, we can't hear you. I shall have to ask some questions, which may prove very embarrassing to us both. Now, do you want me to go on with it? I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, that's all you wanted. Miss Gilpin, will you please tell the court where you were and what you were doing a week ago Wednesday between the hours of midnight and 7 a.m.? I asked you a question, Miss Gilpin. Uh, between um, 12 and 7 a.m.? At home, naturally. Huh. Perhaps I can refresh your memory. That was the night I fell over the lawnmower. That was the night you uh, bandaged my leg. And between midnight and seven, you were in my bedroom. In your bed. I must warn counsel to show some regard for the reputation oh, of this lady. Oh, Your Honor, I wasn't suggesting that her conduct was anything but purist. Now, were you or were you not in my bedroom? Certainly not. Miss Gilpin, did you ever refer to yourself as the uh, Princess Felicity? The girl with the magic lips? The girl with the magic lips? Wow. Well, did you? Well, no. I suppose you don't remember calling me frog and kissing imaginary warts off my face. Oh, really? Well, answer the question. No. You were never in my bedroom. No. You never went out with no, me. No, and I hate you. You hate me. Yes. Fine. Fine. Now, Miss Gilpin, I want you to examine this piece of place. Go on, examine it closely. You recognize it? Well, do you recognize it? Oh, uh, re recognize it? I think you'll find, Miss Gilpin, it came from the bottom of your petticoat. My petticoat? Mm -hmm. Order. 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 If there's any further demonstration, I will clear this court. Who is that man? The press informed me he is the lady's future husband. I regret this unfortunate incident, Mr. Raymond. Uh, you may continue. Come on, Johnny boy. Give it up. Miss Gilpin, did you see this story about me? This midnight prank story? Yes, and I thought it shocking. Shocking. I say to you, Miss Gilpin, that you were my prank mate. Do you deny that? Well, of course I deny it. That's all, Miss Gilpin. Mr. McLeish to the stand. But that's all, Miss Gilpin. Richard McLeish. Where the testimony you're about Do you think Tim's all right? Oh, I'm sure he is. I'll take you home. Thanks. Richard McLeish. So, Mr. McLeish, you say I was with a lady. Sure. That's fine. Now, do you think if you saw this lady again, you could identify her? Sure. Will Miss Nora Gilpin please rise? Will you tell the court, Mr. McLeish, uh, if that is a lady? She looks like her, right? does, huh? Yes, she sure does. But I tell you, Mr. Raymond, the one that was with you had something, something special. A sort of, well, a sort of dazzle. Yeah, a certain sort of razzle-dazzle. Now, you take Miss uh, Gilpin? Yeah, over there. Well, there's certainly nothing razzle-dazzle about her. You might even say that she's chintzy. Well, no, no, Mr. Raymond. I can see how you made the mistake, but I'm positive she ain't the one. That's all. Guilty of disorderly conduct, $20.
The court will recess 15 minutes. I'll meet you outside. Mr. Raymond, in my opinion, you're not as crazy as you've been made to appear. Thank you, Doc. In my humble opinion, there's absolutely no doubt about it. Something wrong with that man. I think he's crazy. Well, excuse me a minute, will you, Doctor? I'll be right out. You know, it's really rather ironical. He's picking on me, I mean. Someone who dislikes him as intensely as I do. You know, he must be crazy. Mistaking me for that razzle-dazzle. I'll make you some coffee. You ever heard such dribble in your life? The princess with the magic lips. Kissing warts off his face. Ooh. If I were a girl, Nora, and there was any doubt in my mind, I'd examine all my petticoats. There might be one. Don't go in that room! I wasn't going in your bedroom, Nora. Well, uh, you heard the man say I wasn't the girl. Mm hmm. Oh, so you think I'm afraid to look, don't you? All right, all right, just to show you, I'll, you and your theories. I only have one with lace on it. It's my very best one. And I'll show you. There. See any lace? I thought it better that you face the truth, Nora. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm capable of that moronic talk. Ever since yesterday, when Raymond came to the hospital, I had a suspicion it was you, but I didn't quite know what to do about it. Now, if your father had been here, I'd have talked to him. I can't believe that I'd go to his bedroom. He said your conduct was most proper. But, man, I detest it. To his bedroom. I... Perhaps you don't detest him as much as you think, Nora. Oh, I do. I do. Well, in any event, it's my opinion, you should postpone your wedding. But why? Why should I postpone my wedding? I loved him. Why should I? Because you're suffering from a deep emotional disturbance. Oh. You should get that all cleared up before you even think of marriage. But I loved him, and I'm going to marry Tim. And I... Oh, this is so weird, I don't know what to do. I really don't. All the guests are invited, and everything's been arranged for. And I, I've just got to have time to think this thing out. I'm so tired. Yes, of course you're tired, oh. Nora. Perhaps you better get some rest. Yes. If you like, I'll prescribe a sedative. You'll get a good night's sleep. A sedative? Oh, no. No, I mustn't. I daren't. I might go to sleep, and I daren't do that. Why, how do I know where I might go or what I might do? Uh, doctor, you go on back to the hospital. Uh, I'll be all right. Uh, Pop will be home in a little while, and then we'll have a nice long talk about it. And thanks. Thanks again, yes, Doctor. Yes, if you need me, phone me. I, I certainly will. And goodbye. goodbye. population in this country? 150,520,389. You know the percentage of women? 50.2. They're in the majority. Now, what you ought to do is join the majority. <laughs> hey, Joe, uh, say, uh, any of the majority loose around here? Well, you know them all, Mr. Raymond. Oh, Mr. Raymond, I wonder if I could have your order. It's for my wife. She's one of them hounds. Would you mind signing it the frog? She'd get a big kick out of that. Johnny, what, wait for me. I'll be, be right with you. I think any more of that coffee that'll be coming out of your ear. Got you, Pop. You're not actually going to sit up all night. Mm -hmm. Listen, darling. Would you like to call the wedding off? I don't know, Papa. I really don't know what to do. Are you sure you love Tim? Mm-hmm. I had a long talk with Dr. Jackson today. He said if you marry the man you love, it might never happen again. He even explained why. Why? Uh, oh, I don't know. It's much too complicated for me. Oh. Jackson thinks you're in love with John Raymond. Are you? 
Of course not. I dislike him intensely. Well, you've got nothing to worry about. Your mother used to walk in her sleep. After we were married, it stopped. That's all that's happening to you. Come on, darling. Take my tip and go to bed. Tonight? On the eve of my wedding? That's all I need to go prowling around tonight. I really must get an escort. Well, I, I sit up and keep watch. You've got to get some rest. I, I, I sit right outside your door here, just in case. There is absolutely no in case about it. I'm going to stay awake tonight if it kills me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again, we bring you the magic music of Ray Bunnell in our nightly feature, Music Till Midnight. Two old favorites, I Had the Craziest Dream, followed by What Can I Say, Dear, After I Say I Am So. Oh, I had the craziest dream last night. Yes, I did. I never dreamt it could be. Yes, there you were. I found your lips close to mine, so I kissed you, and you didn't mind it at all. When I'm awake, such a break never happens. How long can a guy go on dreaming? There's a chance that you can What's up? They certainly like loud music over there, don't they? Uh, aren't you John Raymond? I'm not sure, officer. I'm not sure about anything tonight. But what are you doing here? To tell you the truth, I'm not sure about that either. I had some sort of idea when I came here tonight, but that's gone now. This is no place for you, Mr. Raymond. Mm. Let you and I take a walk. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, not, no, not that way. I know. Papa, he's taking him away. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna make me some more coffee. Oh, wait a minute. You don't want to go back there. Okay. Oh, no, no, not here, Mr. Ed. I wish you'd make up your mind. Come on, sir. You'd better go home. You don't want to get into trouble. Get into trouble? What's your name, officer? Callahan. Did you have a cigarette, Mr. Callahan? No, thank you. Well, anyway, I'll tell you a secret. I used to know when she was a kid, a funny little pest of a kid, that girl who's playing the music so loudly. I used to call her... We had embarrassingly cute names for each other. Whenever she would call me, oh, what she called me, I'd paste her one. Not anymore. Now, when she says it, what's the answer, Mr. Callahan? Two girls can't be made from the same mold. I wish you'd sit down, sir. We're having such an interesting conversation. There's no need of me getting a crick in my neck. Oh, thank you. Well, anyway. Now she's getting married in the morning. You know, I stopped her one night. She said she had a rendezvous with a frog. She said she had a rendezvous with a frog. I thought it was kind of funny, so I told her father about it, and... He said she was probably walking in her sleep. Walking in her sleep? Well, say that again, Mr. Callahan. I want to be sure I'm hearing right. And, and he said that his wife 
her mother used to walk in her sleep, too. Then I'm not crazy. Maybe now I can convince her that... No. No, not that one. When she's awake, she hates me. Dr. Jackson. I know just an man to see a doctor. Who? Oh. Dr. Jackson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Callahan. You're much too good a man for this job. You ought to be head of the Department of Justice. Good night. So she's a split personality, same thing. The question is, what are we going to do about it? She can't marry another man when she loves me. Who loves you, Mr. Raymond? Well, you told me a character named Jughead loves you. But what about Nora, the one you face in court today? Yes. Oh, it's a shame, because in my opinion, Jughead is the real girl, one that represents her true impulses. Well, you're a doctor. There must be a cure for this sort of thing. Oh, there is. There most certainly is. By removing the cause of the conflict between the two personalities. You see, the subconscious has been frustrated, craves something. That craving needs to be satisfied. You do that, she'll give up the struggle. Result, the two personalities will blend into one. Usually the problem is to find out what the subconscious craving is. In this case, we know. It's my theory that the blending of the two personalities could be achieved by marriage, that is, marriage to the right man. And the right man is the one Jughead wants. Well, that's me, isn't it? I'm ready and willing. I'm afraid there's only half the solution, Mr. Raymond. How do you get Nora, the other personality, to be ready and willing? I know what you mean. If we had time, I'm sure it could be done. Unfortunately, psychoanalysis is a long process, and she's marrying Tim McCary in the morning. Well, we have to stop it. We simply have to stop the wedding. Oh, by force? I've tried everything else. I even talked with her father. He listened very patiently and finally decided there was nothing to worry about. Tim McCary was the man she really loved, and everything would be just fine as soon as they got married. Well, I'm afraid to hope the situation, Mr. Raymond. I'm sorry both for you and for Nora. All my life I've avoided complications. Winds up I fall in love with something called a subconscious. Yeah, think of poor Nora. In love with a man, she doesn't even know it. Actually finds him repulsive. Now, let's not exaggerate. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, Doc, uh, yes. what if, uh, oh, what if after she's married, Jughead pays me a visit some night? You know? I'm sure you wouldn't want to get her in trouble, or for that matter, become involved yourself. Fine. Fine. On top of it all, I'll probably have to get out of town and stay out. Night, Doc. This is how your grandfather used to prevent your mother from walking around in her sleep. The moment you opened the door, the string pulled the bucket over and... <laughs> she went back to bed wetter, but safer. Yeah, that's all I do. You won't need the radio now. No! Leave it alone, Papa. Papa, you stand for noise. I can stand it. Put this thing down, Nora. You're wearing yourself out. What? You're wearing yourself out. If I so much as feel anything soft under me, I'll pop off. I'm going to bed. Good night, Papa. Good night. And with the playing of this pretty nightcap, we ring down the curtain on the magic music of Ray Burnett. And so to bed, sleepy like head. It's been fun being with you. We hope you enjoy. Be with us again tomorrow night, same time, same station, same music, and we'll waft away the care of your day. Until then, this is Gene Norman wishing you good
down for you. Never mind that now. I'm on the way. What time are you leaving? Right now. Now you're making sense. Mike, I'm thinking of taking a vacation when this is all over. It's all your possibility. I'll discuss it with you when I get back from Washington. Goodbye. <sighs> I'm going to marry you. To you. Me? Yes. Well, well, that's quite an idea, but hmm? we, we'd better do it tonight, right now, before you change your mind. I, uh, got the thing. This is going to be the flankiest wedding in the history of man and maid. It'll be beautiful wedding, Johnny. I know. You'll probably bash me over the head in the morning. Oh, Johnny. You want me to marry Tim? Oh. What's his name? Oh, Carrie. Name? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Just suppose. Yeah. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, Hello? Uh, Dr. Jackson's theory is Hello? right. Hello? We'll be okay. Hello? Oh, Hello? Mike, hold the phone. You do crazy, don't you? Hello? Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Mike, uh, get your clothes on. Come over here right away. I need a witness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get married. You're, you're gonna be, John. I thought you were on your way to Washington. I'm gonna marry Nora Gil, Nora Gilpin. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here. Say, have you gone crazy or something? I'd better bring your car. We have to sign a justice of the peace. And Mike, Mike, please hurry. Step on it. Join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which as an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocency. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. John Raymond, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Nora Gilpin, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. In accordance with the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. I hope Mr. you're Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me have your car keys. You take a cab. Yeah. Take care of the man. Oh, Mr. Raymond, your marriage certificate. Thank you. Drive carefully. Horace. Guess you uh, can't believe everything you read in the papers. <laughs>
so happy together. You should see the bride. She's so sweet and lovely, and she has the cutest... together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God, since it will affect the entire future of this man and this woman, binding them closely in both sickness and in health. It is therefore not by any to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. For the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helpmeet for him. Into this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. I require and charge you both to remember that love and loyalty alone will avail as the foundation of a happy and enduring home. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold your feet. Hmm? Oh, I do. Stop the wedding. You've got to stop the wedding. I've had just about enough of you. You can't marry her. She happens to be my wife. What? You're crazy, Raymond. You've been crazy ever since I first hold saw it, him. Jim. He's telling the truth. I what had the wedding certificate at Spin My Other Path. I don't believe Th it. That's it. What's it? That's why you went to the motel. Nora, Nora, hey, find some salt. Nora, first time I ever saw a painted person with a smile on her face. 
Oh, she's coming out of it. Where is he? Where is that adorable husband of mine? John Raymond Jr. So handsome. Jughead. I know I'm a precious fraud. But I love you. Doc, she's Nora and she loves me. <laughs> Just like her mother. <laughs>